you off at a bad angle. You know, if you can't see it, that means you are sitting too far away because I'm going to ask one of you people in the back. <laughs> what this one is. <laughs> but wait a minute. <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> yeah, zoom, zoom the camera on. Zoom the camera on. <laughs> but I'm doing this because it's something I want. I'm, 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 I'm very, very serious about this. Because one of the things that we have been covering in our Wednesday night class is the scripture teaches us that. Really to be, to, I hate to use the word, but it's just really true. To be ignorant of the gospel or who we are on what we are, it's really a shame. Yes. And I don't know how many people realize that. It's really a shame to be, ignorant. to lack knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> of who we are. In fact, that's why Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Then he also said, study to show thyself approved. A workman not ashamed. Amen. In several places it talks about that when we are ignorant, it's a shame. And the, the reality of it is, is a lot of us who say that we are Christians don't know a whole lot about who we are and what we are. Do everybody understand? All right? One of the things we're going to uh, do before I go, go into this is Remember this. Christian is not, and all y'all students ought to be on top of this, it's not a noun. What's a noun? Name. Per, I want to look, look at all of the young students quiet on me today. What's a noun, students? What about an idea? Huh? Isn't it person, place, thing, or idea? I'm going y'all. That's way back from there. I don't remember. <laughs> it's not. Christian really is an adjective. And an adjective is what? It's a word that describes a noun. So really, when you say I'm a Christian, you're not saying just say this body is whatever it is. This is a, that is an adjective of who this person is. Man, right. Do everybody understand that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do everybody? Yeah. Okay. We're going to come back to that. You in the pink shirt, lady, young lady, what's your name, lady? Ja who? Ja'Kayla. Ja'Kayla. Ja'Kayla, what is this? Elephant. That's an elephant. Why do you say it's an elephant? It look like one. What do you mean? <laughs> it got a long trunk. What else? And the ears. Okay. How many of y'all agree with her that this is an elephant? Look at the baby raise that hand for her. All of y'all agree. Hold on. Y'all on that side don't agree? Okay. So everybody agree with her that this is an elephant. It looks like an elephant. Yeah. All right. Okay. Young man in the green shirt. What is this? It's a dice. Are you sure? Huh? Why do you say that? It looks like one. What do you mean? It got the right. Okay. It got the, the number, dots on it, and everything. And so that tell you that, do everybody agree with him that this is a dice? Yeah. It looks like a dice. It look like a, oh, it looks like a dice. All right? Okay. So, all right. So, Miss Larnice. What? what is this? Okay. 
Uh, it's a wiggly line. What, what you say it is, son? A wiggly line. What you say it is? You say it's an ear. What you say it is? Ear. Ear. What you say? For me? I'm from, no, I got the two the ushers in the back. They got their hand up. What you say it is? Uh, I can't tell. It's far back. Uh, it's far back. <laughs> You're too far back. So that means what? Get closer. <laughs> Get closer. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Okay, all right. It looks crooked. Anybody else? What, what is it? Um, it looks, no, it looks like a, a worm. It looks like a worm. Okay. Now, uh, uh, y'all, I, I want y'all to know something. Watch this. Watch. What, okay, Louis, last one. What is it? A zombie? It's a zombie. All right. <laughs> okay. I did that for a reason. Because... All of you all said that this was an elephant, right? All of you all agreed that this was a dice. But here, you all don't come to a, just say a, what is it? Conclusion. Conclusion all together. Y'all not in agreement concerning this one, right? Right. Because of this, listen to what I'm saying. The young lady said, this looks like an elephant. So what she had to do is she had to go back and look at, in her mind, look at the elephant, and look at this and say, that's what it is. And that's what all y'all had to do also, right? right? For the guys, same thing. In your mind, you've seen it before, you know what it looked like. When you see this, you say, that's what it is. Here, because number one, it's not finished. It's just a, somebody said a squiggly line, somebody said crooked, somebody said it could be this, it could be that, but because it's not finished, there is no conclusion on what this is. So my question to you is, when we say somebody is a Christian, how are we coming to that conclusion? Think about it. Think about it. When we say that somebody is a Christian, how do we come to that conclusion? The way they live. Okay. By their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. By their beliefs. Okay. That's why we're going to do this. Now we take this away now. Go to the book of Acts 11. And believe me, this is um, this was done, or this is our uh, is done. Oh, just say by a lot of people. Act the eleventh chapter of Act, and go to the twenty fifth verse. I'm using the uh, Scott Bible. I mean, you can, and so y'all gonna have to bear with me because it's. You, you ever notice how when you when you get used to your Bible, when you get somebody else's Bible, it seems like they move stuff around. Y'all know what I'm saying? That's and a you know, look around to that like, is, is that book in the Bible? Did they move it? Uh, and eleventh, are y'all there? Eleventh yeah. chapter, twenty fifth verse. Look at what it says. It says, and uh, then Barnabas departed from Tarsus. To seek Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him into Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were called Christians, or I'm sorry, were first called Christians in Antioch. Do everybody see that? Okay, so. After the, this is after Jesus' 
been crucified, he's ascended back into heaven, and now they are continuing to follow after his teaching. The disciples are now getting, uh, 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 being called again Christians. And in and, and fact, if you, if you uh, uh, study the biblical history on this, it wasn't a compliment. Yes. Uh -huh. was, it was actually a derogatory name. Yes. They were actually being ugly when they called them Christian. Okay. We do it as a, like a badge of honor. Right. But when they, when these people were called Christians, it wasn't something that they were doing. It was something that, that just say, they said, oh, I'm a Christian. No. The other people started looking at them. And they look at them like you look at those pictures. Are y'all seeing what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And they remember how that Jesus was. And how he acted. And they start saying, they are acting like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how they got the name. Because the name Christian means Christ life or life Christ. Are y'all hearing me? So when we say a person is a Christian, you got to first look at Jesus just like you looked at the elephant. Yeah. Just like you looked at the dice. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. See, a lot of times what we'll say a person, they got a healing ministry. They must be a Christian. No, I don't. I'm being honest. That's not scriptural. They can sing real well. It's gifts and callings without repentance. That's scriptural. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Jesus says, <clears throat> Jeff, you know, you need to, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you also as you love one another. And then he says, and by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. And I'm saying this because usually when we ask people, how do you know they are Christian? Love is the last thing they mention. Are y'all hearing me? See, we need to go. I want us to be, I want us to be clear on some of this stuff so that we don't be walking around ignorant. <laughs> because it's going to keep on benefit. Amen? Amen. For being, for being knowledgeable about who, not just who Jesus is, but then they're going to tell you who you are. Wow. Amen? Wow. Now, again, so they called them first. Remember this. Think about this, y'all. Think about this. The day of Pentecost didn't start in Antioch. Are y'all hearing me? The day of Pentecost started in Jerusalem earlier, back in the first part of this book. And even after they had received the Holy Ghost and spoke in tongues, they were not called Christians in Jerusalem. They had to be wait until they got to Antioch. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm telling y'all this for we Think about this. Think about this. In fact, remember Peter, when, when, when God got ready to call Cornelius, and then we're going to go to another scripture. I'm sure. When God called Cornelius, uh, Peter, and told Peter, he wanted Peter to go to Cornelius' house. Remember, Cornelius was not one of their folks. And back then, you know, they, you had some discrimination going on. How, you, how, how, how many of y'all know there was discriminations going on in the Bible? And so they, and Peter didn't want to go to those people. Amen? Peter did not want to be associated with those people. 
And the, 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 the word of God tells us, it said, and a voice came to Peter and said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And what it was actually, what it kind of interpreted or saying that, Peter, go and take, embrace, go and get. And Peter said, I want y'all to think about what Peter said. Peter said, not so, Lord. Never have I eaten anything that was common or unclean. And what, what, what Peter was saying was, just say that his Lord, listen to what I'm saying, tells him, go do something. And he said, no, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 hold, on. I, I, hold on. Did that hit you yet? Peter said, no, Lord. Basically, he was saying, I don't hang out with it. Amen? This is why they can be called Christians in Jerusalem. Think about it. Peter said, here it is. Now this was the voice that was coming from heaven. This was the voice that was coming from Christ. This is the voice that coming and telling him, go to these people. And Peter said, no, Lord. In fact, he said it three times before he finally went. You got me? Yeah. Now, think about this. <laughs> After Peter went to their house and those people received the Holy Ghost, Peter went back home and his brother was waiting on him. When he got back, and they started questioning Peter, what you doing with, with those people? And Peter had to defend himself against his brothery. Because they were all sitting up there saying, what are you doing over there with those people? You know we don't supposed to do that. And that's how a lot of church folks is today. And that's why we got a lot of church folks and don't have a lot of Christians. Because you know what? It's certain folks they just can't deal with. I ain't never done nothing like that. No, you have, as soon as you said that. <laughs> Amen. Mm. The real one of the reasons that you can give you is it took them to get to Aria before they changed. And one of the one of the things that helped them change was the disciples who was with Jesus, who were still struggling with, you know, helping these people who was not like them. Amen. And this is, you know, again, this is why today people love for you to stand up and preach about the prostitute on the corner and this person and, and the drug addict and whatever. And boy, you can rip right, man, preach, preacher. That's those people that we can't be associated with. Because, see, it may, it may injure our reputation. You know, the homosexual. Ooh, I'm walking by the you know. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Go to Acts 26. And I'm going to read a little bit of this, you know, because I want to say this. What I'm saying too is, what what are the things that happened that 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 helped them to change was God brought in some people who wasn't caught up in what they was caught up in. Amen. And so all of a sudden, God started bringing in Paul and Simon and, and Barnabas, and later on it will be Simon. Simon. You know what? See, one thing you remember this here, 
Hey, God going to get his mission done whether we do it or not. God, look, God will bring folks out of the barroom and out of the crack house and out of all of those places and to get what he won't done and you can like it or not. <laughs> he stopped bringing in some folks who didn't, they didn't, look, they didn't care. They went to the Gentile folks, you know. They didn't know all the rules y'all had. They went to them. They didn't, they, they didn't speak the same language. They didn't have the same culture. They were totally different. Because we have to sing this kind of song and we got to do it our kind of way. And a lot of us won't be in for nothing. Watch this. Watch this. <laughs> Chapter 26. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you are permitted to speak for yourself. So Paul stretched out his hand and answered for himself. I love this here. He said, I think myself happy. Stop right there. Y'all, 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 Y'all hear what he said? Oh, look what he comes up. Look his opening statement is. I think myself happy. Do you know that happiness and joy and all that kind of stuff? And you know it starts in your thinking. Do you know that? And do you know that all that gloominess and sadness and everything that comes from that too? You, know that? you can keep on thinking about your situation and thinking about your situation and thinking about your situation and all of a sudden you just is sour. And somebody come up, what's wrong with you? I'm thinking about my situation. <laughs> but see, if you can remember that all things work together for the good, you know what? See, then you start looking at it and say, you know what, God. That's why I can go ahead on the rejoice because God got a plan for me. Let's move on. Watch this here. I think myself happy. Listen to him. He's a king of Grippa. Because today I shall answer for myself before you concerning all the things of which I am accused by the Jews. Especially because you are uh, you are ex expert in all custom and questions which have to do with the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to hear me patiently. He said, "My manner of life from my youth, which was spent from the beginning among my own nations at Jerusalem, all the Jews know. They knew me from." The first, if they were willing to uh, testify that according to the strictest sect of our religion, I live as a Pharisee, and now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God of our Father. To, the, to this promise, our twelve tribes earnestly serve God, night and day, hope to attain. For this hope, say King Agrippa, I am accused by the Jews. Why should it be thought, uh, thought incredible by you that God raised the dead? He said, indeed, I myself thought I must do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. This I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints I shut up in prison having received authority from the chief priest, and when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. And I punished them often in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme and, be, uh, and being exceedingly enraged against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities. While thus Hallelujah. <laughs> I 
occupied as I journeyed to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest at midday. One thing about a testimony, y'all, you know what? You're going to remember it yeah, yeah. in every detail. I'm not talking about, I got a new job, I got a car. No, I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about when God really changed your life. You got to the man say, look, I remember this when it was at midday. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're going to remember exactly when it happened. All right, let's move on. Because I'm getting excited. He said, listen, he said, at midday, O king, along the road, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun shining around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we all had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is hard to kick against the prick and against the guard. So I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus from you, under whom you are persecuting. But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to, the, uh, to, uh, to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of both of the things which uh, you have seen and of the things which I will yet reveal to you. I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentile to whom I know, uh, to whom I now send you uh, to open their eyes, to order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sin and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem throughout all the region of Judea and then the Gentiles that there they sh should repent and turn to God and do works befitting repentance. Stop right there for a moment. So now, hold on. Remember Peter, when the voice came to Peter and told Peter rise, Peter said no. Right? And you know that God is telling a lot of us, this is our Lord, who we say, Lord, is telling us to do something and we are saying no. I need you to think about this for a moment. It's a lot of us that the Lord is speaking to and we are saying like Peter, no Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the difference is when it happened to Paul, Paul didn't say no.
of truth and reason. For the king before whom I also speak freely. Now this, this, this thing, these things, for I am convinced that none of these things escape his attention since this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? And I know that you are, you do believe. And King Agrippa said to him, you all <laughs> persuaded me to be a Christian. Well, 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 uh, Amen. Amen. King, after hearing that testimony, King of you got to remember that King, this is the King. This is a man who's standing in bondage, a man who's standing in chains, who's standing before a king, and all of a sudden the king looked at him and said, you know what? You almost made me get off my throne. And come where you are. You understand what I'm saying? You almost made me get off my high horse and come where you are. I'm going to close with that with this. Go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter. Keep going to the back of the book. It's in the back of the book. Four. And I'm, I'm showing y'all this because these are the only three places where the word Christian is actually in the Bible. So now y'all got a trivia question. Tanisha. <laughs> She's still trying to win that $20. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, it's, no, it's important because you may be challenged with this on the street somewhere. And it's it, and the, the 20, I mean the 4 and 4 and uh, 16, if I can find it. In fact, start at 12. In fact, start at 12. Watch, watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this, watch this. Beloved, do not think it's strange concerning the fiery, the fiery thoughts which is to try you. Tell somebody it's just a trial. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, y'all, listen to me. If you are a believer in Christ, it's just a trial. Remember that. I don't care, look, I don't care how hard it may seem, it's just a trial. And what it means, it's a trial of your faith. It's to see that if you can continue to believe, while things are not going well. It's just a trial. Do everybody got that? Watch this. <laughs> he said, think of it not uh, uh, concerning, think of it not strange, concerning the fear of a trial, which uh, is to try you as though some strange thing or some strange thing happened to you. Y'all hear that? So don't think about it happened to me. No, it's a trial. Yeah. Okay? Watch this. But rejoice. This is how you think yourself happy. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering. Yeah. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. That when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Let me stop right here. I was talking to somebody this weekend, and, and we were talking about some difficult times or whatever. And I was telling them, I said, you know what I have learned? When I'm, you know, when, when, when things are happening, even when people are, you know, attacking you, and you know, y'all know a lot of people attacking your character and all that. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about. I learned this here. Even for instance, and. How many of y'all know about when you are really good to somebody and then they just backstab you? Okay. One thing I have learned in that is I now know how Jesus felt. I don't take 
hated that person with that person. I looked at it and I said, you know what? Because see, God will deal with them. Right. See, they don't have to deal with what seed they sow. Yeah. I don't have to worry about that. But what I do, what I have like to ask, you know what? I sometimes like to think that, well, Jesus was a miserable joker. <laughs> and for real. <laughs> he was miserable a lot of times. To see people just crazy, yeah. just going after stuff that's going to destroy them, and you're trying to tell them and they won't listen. Well, it had to be hurt, it had to hurt his heart. To do all of that for these people, and then they I turn around and put you on the cross. Right. Right. So, no, sometimes he just allows us, <laughs> he allows us to go through. And experience his suffering. Listen to this. He says, but when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached from the name for the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you on their part. He is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. Mm. Did y'all got that? But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief. I mean, or, I mean a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. That's a whole lot of people suffer from that. Whole lot of people suffer from that one. Right there. And they feel it be hurt and they be mad. And they want you to get mad with them at the people they was in business. And not that's the enemy. No, that ain't the enemy. That's busybody. Is this mic on? Amen. Watch this up. For this time has come for judgment. And to begin as the house of God. And if it be begin with us first, what will be the end to those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous are is scarcely saved, wherefore will the ungodly and the sinners appear? Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their soul to him in, in commit in doing as to a faithful creator. Amen. I missed it on here where it says Christians. Right? It's 16. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, and, and yeah, any, anyone suffer as a Christian, right, let him look, not be ashamed. Now watch this, y'all. Because, see, some of the teachings out here have got us messed up. Y'all know that? And, and I'm, I'm, what I'm telling you is this here. See, they have taught us that if you're not blessed, and they talking about how Oh y'all, am, am I right? Mm -hmm. You are, if you don't have blessed or have material thing, property, you know, a, a, a lot of money, expensive cars, whatever, and this is what a whole lot of us are busting our behind to get some of our frustrations because we don't have it. We are sad and sick and because we don't have what we saw people have get. And so we don't feel as blessed as they are. Y'all know that? And we walk and live frustrated and mad and angry because we don't have what they told us we're supposed to have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got a big ministry with, you know, the mega church. And a lot of people even think, well, how many people they got? Then you, they know if God is with them or not. 
Y'all heard all that too? It's out there. But let's go with what the scriptures say. Because see, when you find the word Christian in the Bible, and I'm not against having stuff, I'm just saying that's not the indicator of a Christian. Amen? See, because if you really want to look at somebody's life and compare it to Christ, you're looking at a person who is living a life constantly working, constantly loving, constantly forgiving, constantly looking past people's faults, constantly accepting all kinds of faults, constantly. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? When you say a person is a Christian, you got to look at him first and then compare them to him. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So see, when they were calling these people Christians, they weren't saying that because they had nice stuff and big chariots and big homes and all that kind of stuff. They were looking at them saying, even in their difficulty, even in their struggle, even when they're down and out, even when they're being prosecuted, they said on his word, that's what being a Christian is. Look at Jesus was standing before Pilate. And Pilate said, man, you need to tell me something because I have the power, look, to, to free you, uh, to save your life, and I have power to take it. Jesus looked right at him and said, you don't have power to do nothing. You don't understand what I am. And he was standing down, beaten and bruised, but he stood on his father's word. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? So listen, when we talk about a Christian, we got to start looking at Jesus first. And if you don't know what Jesus looked like, then I encourage, I encourage you. I'm not Paul to say, I beseech you to start seeking him out. And you will know what a Christian really is. Because look, they won't be able to fool you no more. They'll come to you with all kinds of stuff and you look right at them and go, okay. <laughs> That's good. Amen. Or you'll look at him and say, that's a Christian. Yeah, right, right. And know what you're looking at. Amen? Yeah. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And I'm telling y'all this. See, when you get this in your life, your life don't change. Yeah. I'm being honest. I'm being honest with you. It was y'all. I, I say this not just because I read it. I say this from the experience. I was like Paul. Now, I grew up in the strictest group, religious church. The most religious church you've ever wanted to be. I mean, honey, we were being saved every week. Y'all laughing. Y'all laughing. I'm being honest. Because every time you did something, I mean, you, it was, we had so many rules that it was like, I mean, you're not broken up. So you got to go back and save me, Lord. Okay, I'm clean, all right. I get to get out in two, three hours later. <laughs> I'm being honest. I'm so glad I don't have to live like that no more. And I'm glad those folks can't condemn me. And can't make me feel sad or frustrated or nothing. And even when that, 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 that devil himself comes trying to do it, he can't make me feel bad either. Because I know who I am, and I know whose I am. And so regardless of what I'm going through throughout the week, when I get to Zion, I'm not walking in here trying to struggle to get into the service. Because you know what? I already know that this is just a trial of my faith, and I... Hallelujah! It's gonna be all right. How many of y'all know that now? You gotta already start telling them. Like Paul said, I think myself. And the way you do that is you start remembering what he told you. Yeah. How you remember that if he's doing it, it's just gonna make you better. It's just gonna improve who you are. It's just gonna increase who you are. Hallelujah! 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 So, when 
when you somebody asks you what's a Christian again, or whatever, you might need to pause before you answer that question. And you might need to look at it and say, hold on, let me look at you. Thank you. 